Maybe hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. You're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. Hey friends, it's been a bit, uh, been super busy in the shop, but I got two things in this video that I think you'll really find of interest. Uh, number one, I'm going to talk about uh, some tips and suggestions of what it's like if you haven't worked on a project for a long time and you're coming back to it. So the CBR 400, we have been waiting for uh, a fuel pump for quite some time and, and honestly, I've just been really busy with, uh, with the drone company. I haven't got back much into the shop. So I'm gonna talk about a really crucial thing that you should do before you hit a starter button or before you mess with a project that you haven't uh, touched in a long time. This will save you potentially thousands of dollars and you're gonna wanna know it. So that's number one. And then the other thing I'll do, since it's been a while since I checked in, uh, I finally gave myself a little treat last night and uh, actually a few nights this week and I really uh, spent some time on the shop and really cleaned it up and got it organized. I wanted to show you a couple of my new uh, like organizational uh, things that I did in the shop and uh, how cool it is I finally got unpacked and got a lot of these tools out. So we are making huge progress. I've got the crazy hair going on. I don't care. I just wanted to get you a tip and get you a little bit of uh, hello content. So if this catches your attention, let's get to it. All right, here we are. We're back at the CBR 400. We're getting ready to uh, continue continue on with uh, the carb installation and uh, using the PropTech tools. I've actually got someone stopping by today that wanted to see uh, the PropTech tool uh, compression tester tool that we showed you. Uh, uh, in a few videos back, been quite a few videos back, but man, we have been waiting for a stinking fuel pump for this thing for quite some time, and then the holidays hit, and it's just been a long time since I touched the bike, and I'm extremely comfortable and protected, and I feel I could go and hit that starter button and not have any problems, but I want, I thought, I was thinking about you folks, I was thinking about the people that especially don't do, do this a lot, I was thinking maybe about the newer techs that are <clears throat> working on a project in the shop that they haven't touched for a long time. And there you could really get into trouble from something someone else did, like not being careful, parts flying from an air gun or something and landing down in this intake, and you could have a problem. So what I do when I, I store a project is I obviously, I plug the intake manifolds. Okay, that's number one. And then I take a towel and I had a towel wrapped all over the bike. And, and another big reason is while I had the, the quote unquote downtime and was really needing to unpack the shop, um, I'll show you a little bit. I promised you in the end I was gonna show you some updates. Um, I ran new airlines through the ceiling. So that meant I had the ceiling dust coming down. Who the heck knows when you pull a tile if you're gonna have a, uh, an old screw or fastener fall down and you don't know where it went. The last place in the world I want it to go into is into an intake. Because when you hit that starter button, what will happen is if you drop anything down the intake, that screw, if it sneaks past the valve, gets between the piston head and boom, you're going to have major problem. You could bend a valve, you could uh, obviously you're hurt the piston in the head. There's absolutely, it's going to cause you have to tear the engine apart and have $1,000 worth of trouble sitting on your hand or more. So how do you avoid that? Well, the first couple things are preparation like I talked about, but... Even though I, I had prepared this, I still have, I talk about skill sets and muscle memory and like doing something repeatedly so that you do it all the time. Well, I, I modeled that myself here is I just went ahead and instead of hitting the starter button, what you wanna do, and this is a really cool, fast, easy way to, to also tell if an engine has compression or if it kind of feels good and just to see if it turns over. So you can use this for other things like uh, like another thing in other videos on compression testing, if you haven't seen those, uh, uh, I'll put some links below. But on uh, compression testing, you should never go and just hit a motor that you don't know if it has the ability to turn over. It's, it's hard on everything. So what you wanna do is you wanna manually turn it over. Now the service manual is gonna have you pulling body work, pulling covers, access holes, finding that bolt on the crankshaft and being able to turn it over. And then you got to worry, well, is a left-handed bolt? Am I accidentally going to loosen that bolt and then go, uh-oh, I need to go the other way. And then you end up breaking the Loctite. There's all kinds of problems with that. So the simple, fastest way to turn the motor over is to simply take the bike, have the back stand jacked up so you can turn the tire. I'm going to go ahead and put this in top gear. And by putting it in top gear, it makes it a little easier with the transmission ratios to turn over the engine. And then grab a spoke in your wheel or whatnot. And then what I'm doing 
Well, actually, before that, I'm skipping a step that I do. Uh, you can see here, I took a magnet, and you can go and just put it down the intakes and see if you catch something. I mean, that's, uh, that's definitely number one. And then uh, number two, get yourself a good light. Um, I'll put links below to these two. If you haven't seen my video on my review of these flashlights, they're killer. I'm going on three, four months now. I love it. But anyway, I'm going to look down in there, make sure everything's good. I don't see anything in there. You remember, for the, tip, the example that I'm given is I'm talking about you're in a busy shop and that bolt could have went flying from somewhere else, whether you or someone else, and landed in there. So we're really being protective here. But anyway, back to this. I'm gonna grab the wheel here and I'm gonna go ahead and you can see I have compression because the spark plugs are still you know, in the motor. So it's, it's taking some effort to turn this over. And then what I wanna do is I want to I really want to go around multiple times <clears throat> on a multi-cylinder bike to make sure that I get all four or six or whatever, whatever the number of cylinders, I want to make sure that they all have the potential to open and close those valves because here's the reality. Let's say something fell down in there and you're turned over by hand. What you're going to have then is you're just going to have like a bump and it, it won't turn over. It will lock up. Well, that's still not ideal, but it's a heck of a lot better than hitting a starter button and going wham and slamming that bolt up in there. I've even, uh, I've even heard of uh, places where I've taught this to students and years later they came back and said, oh my God, you remember when you told me I never turn a motor over at the starter button? Yeah, you know, I've done that as habit since college and I was turned over and it got hard and I was like, oh shit, oh shit. And they knew they lost a bolt like from the airbox or something. So what they were able to do is just then back the motor up to loosen that tension, get down in there with a magnet. Maybe they have to pull the exhaust to get in there. Who knows? But they're able to get in there and fish out that bolt, get it apart. Now, no engine disassembly, no head gasket, no head, no uh, piston, you know, like everything else. So I find this to be incredibly important step. Of, of working on something and you know I'm using the example of like long-term storage but let's let's face it let's think about it the real reality of it is is that this is something that needs to happen daily especially in your production shops or I, I keep using like these big examples but realistically if you're alone working on something in your own garage you want to still protect and cover things up and not rely on eh, nothing's going to happen no one's around because you do not know what goes flying and ricocheting believe me after being a technician for you know 25 years plus when you're using compressed air and blowing stuff around you could be cleaning a carburetor 20 feet away and that son of a biscuit bolt will somehow find its way somewhere you don't want so anyway that is my tip for Something you should do when you haven't touched something in a long time. I hope that's really useful. So what I'll do now is I said I'd show you a few things that uh, I've changed in the shop and what's going on. And so let's go to that part of the video.